Okay, we're going to go to service. I'm going to give you the code for this. It is 2213. Now, what you want to do is you want to go to the NIBP area. Now, there's check, cal, park, uh, pop off. What we want to do is we want to go into the check. What this did is it just put it into a service mode where it's going to display the pressure. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze this bulb. Well, I'm going to put this one into its own service mode. Manometer down there, right? I'm going to squeeze the bulb and it's going to inflate the cuff here and that's going to pressure up my device. There is another way to do a static check and that is to check the reading on the tester versus the reading on the screen. And you'll notice we're really not far off there. Uh, I believe it's within three at that point. Now, there's a lot of different checks that a person can do here. Let me get to where we can see them both. I don't know if that's going to be possible. That works. What I'm going to do here is I am going to get a 200 and it doesn't have to be exact for 200 here so notice here I got 200 here I got 200 there everything seems stable so I'm gonna look at the time and uh, Sometimes you can have a stopwatch for this. Does anyone have a stopwatch secondhand? I looked at back at the clock on the wall. It, at the 5, this was at 95. Notice I'm just going to let it sit. I'm sorry, 195. I'm going to let it sit at 195. And I'm going to let this thing stay for a solid minute. And what we're doing here is we're doing something called the leak test. Okay? What we're doing is we're checking the integrity of the cuff itself. Does it leak? Incidentally, in the static pressures, you could actually do static accuracy here and test, test it at 200, 150, 150, and verify that the uh, error does no more than uh, you know three at each step. So, we're going to give it a, uh, there's one minute. So, in one minute, it dropped approximately 10 millimeters of mercury. Everything leaks. I'm going to tell you that. Everything in an air pressure system pretty much leaks. The question is how much. Some leaks are very, very small to the point where they're, they're not there, right? And this one's pretty small, but it is still leaking. And the reason why it's leaking is probably because of these connectors. There's a lot of connectors in it, and more connectors just add for a increased risk of leaking. Then there's also this valve. I've got this valve. Now notice, I'm going to bleed it down to about 150, right? 150 is 151. That's pretty blooming close. Bleed it down to about a hundred. One oh one, one oh two is one oh two. So it gets more accurate the lower I go. Fifty is about one fifty one is one fifty one. So no, did I say one fifty one? We did that station already. Fifty one is fifty one. So um <clears throat> That is a modified static check. But for the main static check, I don't want you doing this test unless it's the only check you have, right? Sometimes when you're doing uh, a check and you don't have the simulators, you don't have the sim cube or, or something similar to fall back on, you have to put it on your own arm. And when you do have to put it on your own arm, you get some form of a pressure meter and uh, check its pressures that way. So, there is another check that we need to do. We've done the leak check. There is a physical safety in here. It's called the pop-off. Okay? We're going to go to the pop-off check. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my pressure te uh, pressure tester here. I'll put it up top. It seemed to work really well there. On manometer, I've just ran out of hands. Ugh. There we go. Boy, that was fun. It must have looked really fun. I'll try and cut that out with all the juggling right what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna slowly increase my pressure why is my manometer not working I'm gonna reset my sim cube it didn't seem to like that juggling act Okay, now you'll notice this thing reached a pressure at some point in time and then it just released. Let's do this again. One twenty eight, one sixty, one eighty. So I've got to have about one eighty and then it stopped. I should have uh Is it just me or did this thing just go non functional? Yeah, well not test equipment. <laughs> Apparently that's uh, that is not the case. You put it into the pop off check, you increase the pressure, let me do this slower. We'll be able to read where the machine's at. It looked like one seventy. That's too low. This thing should not pop off at one seventy. Typically, the typical pop-off range for most devices is 300 millimeters of, uh, of mercury because that is the point at which a patient bruises. So what we want to do is we want to not bruise a patient. That's about 5 PSI, and at 5 PSI, you've got a risk of bruising. So that would be the, the checks that you want to run an NIBP unit on. Once again, they were static pressure. We verified alarms right we verified the leak test we did a modified static check remember the the 200 150 150 and then we did uh, the pop off increase it till the device says that's had too much okay i'll go ahead and i'll post this video to the class site and uh, you all can go ahead and get this done in the lab